the World Health Organization's 11th revision of the International Classification of Diseases, abbreviated to ICD-11, has added gaming disorder to its conclusive repertoire of diagnosable medical conditions. Characterized as people who spend so much time gaming it takes priority over everything else, to some, this addition seems to be an attack on their favorite pastime. But the information circulating on social media is often a biased perspective on what is, on the World Health Organization's part, a genuine attempt to understand and help the younger generation through a very real issue, game addiction. Go home and then just turn on a console and boom, you're not inside your room anymore. I do before we begin, be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays and click on the links in the description to vote on upcoming content. Now, you might think the idea that people game too much that it becomes a genuine issue in their lives is kind of ridiculous, but unfortunately you'd be wrong, contrary to popular belief. The WHO adding gaming disorder is most likely not a response to the crazes of games like Fortnite, but instead to the very real deaths of people who died while playing their favorite games. In many countries in Southeast Asia, this has become an issue large enough to change police patrols and even add legislation, as more and more young people are spending their time in internet cafes. You come here, sit at your pew, and pray to the gods of gaming. In fact, it's countries like Taiwan, South Korea, and China which have been pressuring the WHO to include gaming disorder so that it can be medically looked into. It was in 2012 that a 23-year-old gamer named Chen Rongyu died in Taiwan after playing League of Legends for 23 continuous hours in an internet cafe. The same year, a 19-year-old called Chuang Cheng Feng also died in a different internet cafe in Taiwan when he played Diablo 3, spontaneously collapsing when he got up to go outside and take a break, and was pronounced dead at the scene by paramedics. In an effort to prevent incidents like this, the Taiwanese police now check on internet cafes after 10 p.m. to make sure there are no persons under 18 present, and there are even various campaigns aimed at warning the country's youth about the dangers of over-gaming. In South Korea, there have even been laws passed way back in 2011, making it illegal for teens to play online games in internet cafes after midnight. This is the most wired country on Earth, with the world's fastest data speeds. Gaming disorder is officially defined as a pattern of gaming behavior characterized by impaired control over gaming, increasing priority given to gaming over other activities to the extent that gaming takes precedence over other interests and daily activities, and continuation or escalation of gaming despite the occurrence of negative consequences. Now, this is the real key. These negative effects are things like distress, irregular sleeping, or putting gaming before things like hygiene or nourishment. These behaviors must also be noticeably detrimental to a person's life and would need to continue for at least 12 months. This means that if you get obsessed with the new Call of Duty for about a month after its launch, you wouldn't be at risk for being qualified as having a gaming disorder. However, the World Health Organization does believe gaming disorder can be as detrimental as drug or alcohol addiction, a classification which has prompted major backlash from the gaming community. However, the World Health Organization's decision to define gaming disorder as a digital affliction exclusively also has become the point of contention. After all, there are lots of games that people play that aren't video games. The World Health Organization aren't accusing frequent Dungeons & Dragons players of becoming addicted, and they frequently also wouldn't try to diagnose a chess grandmaster for practicing too much. The reasoning behind this is unclear, but there are less high-profile deaths associated with board games, while admittedly video games are always viewed with suspicion by people who don't play them. Because we were just having a good time, having conversations, and, and now they're just going to play video games all day. So I guess that's the end to our short-lived friendship. So why would it be important for the WHO to classify this as its own disorder? Well, they're looking to research the effects of excessive gaming on existing conditions like anxiety, depression, ADHD, etc. And they want to tackle the gaming disorder in the hope of tackling the deeper issues at play. Some experts have said that the gaming disorder category removes focus from these underlying problems while others think it's a necessary factor that has to go into the diagnosis. Since gaming disorder isn't an attack on gamers or the gaming industry as a whole, it actually has far fewer cases than people are worried about. However, British professor Mark Griffiths pointed out that there is no minimum number of cases needed to be identified for a disorder to be classified as such. So if just one person died in an internet cafe, that would still be grounds to add gaming disorder to ICD-11. After all, what if everyone with a rare disease was told that their disease was invalid because not enough people had it? 
With the rising popularity of video games increasing, it's been a growing concern that the passion for video games could turn into addiction. Ultimately though, one point made by people against the classification of gaming disorder stands out. Why is there no smartphone addiction? Or why is there no internet addiction more broadly? Why do people who play PUBG all day get slapped with the idea that they're at risk of an addiction more than people who constantly share memes on Facebook? Well, <laughs> in fact, the WHO is looking into all of this. They are supposedly investigating smartphones and computers more generally for the same behavioral addiction pathology. So in the years to come, we may also see wider diagnoses for smartphone and internet addiction. However, both the US Entertainment Software Association and the UK Interactive Entertainment Association are skeptical of the diagnosis, with the chief of the latter organization criticizing the WHO for the inconclusive nature of their research. Some have even speculated that the WHO is risking its own integrity by giving in to pressure from countries where game addiction is a more persistent issue. However, while many experts believe that it's a disorder, some believe that gaming is a coping mechanism for underlying conditions such as anxiety or depression. Things like substantial anxiety. The vast majority of gamers certainly do not have game addiction and know when to put their games down so they can get on with other things like school, work, their family and relationships, take a shower, or, you know, eat food. Basically, the classification is not there for people who live for gaming, as many of us do. It's for people who might die from gaming. Thanks for watching Mojo Plays. Be sure to subscribe and click on the link in the description below to check out our suggestion page and vote on what content you'd like to see us cover next.